name is Joseph Reichelt, and today for this project, I'll be working with Grace Vedra, Kate Cass, and Joshua Rosenstein. So today we'll be talking about the success and history of Tesla. But first, let's get into the personal life of Elon Musk. So Elon Musk was born June 1st, 1971. Didn't start out too rich, didn't start out too poor, had an average life. But what got Elon Musk where he is today is his innovation success. So when was Tesla founded? Tesla was founded in 2003, June 1st. The three founders of Tesla, however, were Martin Eddard, J.B. Straubel, and Elon Musk himself. However, he became the head CEO of the company Tesla because of his innovative ideas. In 2008, the, the, the electric Roadster was the first vehicle developed by Tesla. At a single charge, it can go 245 miles in range. That is far greater than any electric vehicle for its time. However, Porsche did try to compete with Tesla, but failed. They're primarily a gas car, and, so, uh, and unfortunately for them, they lacked that experience on how to make electricity innovative. So as we discussed about innovation and success, is uh, how did Tesla go from multi-million dollar company to a multi-billion dollar company? So how is the company, the idea of Tesla, a business model for success? Well, he didn't stop at vehicles. He's now trying to colonize space and Mars. These are his plans to do by 2050. So, according to one quote that I actually wanted to share that Elon Musk said was, good, better, best. Never let it rest until your good is your better and your better is your best. That means there's just no stopping. There's always moving forward. There's always room for improvement. And you can see that through his vehicles. So right now, currently, Tesla sells Model 3, Model 3 Performance, Model Y, Model X, and Model S. These four different types of vehicles serve a person in many different ways. The Model Y as one of uh, his most sold vehicles because it is a family vehicle, it's convenient, Elon Musk knows what his consumers needs, and he fulfills the needs of his consumers. And that is why he is getting so much success, so much money, so much fame. And, and it's, just, it's, it's a perfect example for business communication and for success. Uh, I think a lot of CEOs now don't understand the needs of their own consumers, and that is how they lose a lot of money. However, Elon Musk, I think he puts, his, he puts himself in the shoes of his consumers, and that's what we need. Right? I think that's a form of innovation. So, all right, so let's talk about when these vehicles um, were made, right? What year, what are the stats of these vehicles, and how are they convenient to the specific needs of the consumer? So, first, let's get into um, the conveniences of his vehicles and why uh, consumers love them so much. So, the Model 3 is a sporty car, right? It charges up to 320 miles. And that's how far you can go in distance. It's very convenient. A lot of gas vehicles cannot do that. They cannot go that distance. Some can go over. However, <clears throat> it's a lot more pricier. The Model 3 Performance is even a faster car. It goes at a longer range. Charges even faster. Charges in less than 10 minutes. Sometimes you get gas, depending on the line. It can be a lot longer than 10 minutes. And a very huge inconvenience. <clears throat> so the Model X, however, is a $100,000 vehicle. Um, not everyone can afford that, however, that is another very innovative car for families that need to road trip together, that need to get stuff done. Uh, and about all these vehicles that a lot of people like is that they have security systems, they have cameras on each end. And this is where I was mentioning earlier how Elon Musk and his company are left without competition. Not a lot of vehicles have such high security. Not a lot of vehicles have cameras to record incidents, to record robberies, to record accidents. And a lot of Tesla owners are protected. As a matter of fact, it's like an insurance. A lot of, um, as a matter of fact, uh, people I've known have had um, people break into their vehicle, but they have Tesla so they can record and track down the robber. And, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> so Martin, Martin Will, who's one of the, uh, he's a, Article, he writes articles and publishes them. 
he mentions uh, how Elon Musk, his vehicles uh, are just decades ahead of the average gas vehicle, if we're comparing so. The average gas vehicle right now, in comparison to Tesla, we might have to wait another 20, 30 years for a Ford Taurus or a regular um, G5 Ram to catch up to Tesla's now. So now that we've talked about the conveniences and the specialties of each of Elon Musk and Tesla's models, now we're talking about which year they came out and how rapidly they came out. Now this is part of the reason why Elon Musk was so successful, right? If we're talking about business and success and how it brings it to the table, just look at how fast he makes these cars. So the Model X and the Model S were made the same year, both in 2012. And then the Model 3, an even more innovative car, came out in 2017. And then the Model Y came out in 2019, the big SUV family vehicle. Now this year, 2021, there's the Model S Plaid. The Model S Plaid is such a nice vehicle. It's so innovative. It actually has a gaming PC in the center of the vehicle and it self-drives completely, 100% self-driven. No vehicle, as we talked about earlier about innovation and competition, no vehicle can self-drive the way Tesla does. No vehicle can record and, and, uh, and track uh, inconveniences, accidents, burglars. And we're, we're looking at a, a company that's just in the future. It's not even in the right generation. Many journalists have done this research. Many journalists have said this. And, and we go from a, a, a small multi-million dollar company, which in the grand scheme of things is kind of small, to a multi-billion dollar company that's now doing business in space. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pass it on to my colleague and she's going to discuss the, he's going to discuss it, Joshua, it's show. Well, the innovation just keeps going forward and forward and forward. It doesn't seem like there's any limit. Uh, and people want to know where is Tesla going to go though when Elon Musk is gone. That may or may not be for a while. But until then, that's just for someone like you and me to decide or think about. Uh, so now I'm going to pass it on to my colleague. She's going to talk on uh, a similar discussion. And we're going to go deeper into the history, the success, and the plans of Elon Musk and his company. Thank you. Hi, my name is Grace Vedra, and I'll be talking about some of Elon Musk's methods that he uses for success that your company can implement too. Elon Musk has many unconventional practices that have put him and his company ahead of the competition. Let's take a look at a few of them. The first is his hiring practices. Although he owns multiple companies with thousands of employees, he tries to be involved in the hiring process. And when interviewing candidates, there are, there are a few qualities that he looks for specifically. First, what problems have they solved? How do these people view challenges and what steps do they take to overcome them? How successful are they? And do they take what they've learned and continue to apply it to future situations? Second, a college degree doesn't really matter. If you are capable of getting your work done, doing it well, and doing it competently, it isn't really significant to Musk who signed your diploma, or if you even have one to begin with. What is more important is that you are skilled at your job and able to do your work to the level that you are expected to. Third, you should not hire jerks. This might seem like kind of a no-brainer. Having a collaborative work environment is incredibly important to Musk. It is especially difficult to work with people you truly do not get along with. So culture compatibility and general attitude are something that Musk pays special attention to when interviewing candidates. People are not going to get as much work done if they hate their colleagues. So making sure the people you hire are a good fit for your workplace and are good people in general is essential to workplace morale and success. Fourth, give the candidate the opportunity to prove their worth. A job interview is a stressful situation and many potential employees are suitably nervous. Give them a chance to talk about their successes and sometimes even their failures if it will help them prove how they belong at your company and are a good fit for your workspace. Finally, bring current employees into the hiring process. Nobody knows what a department needs from a new hire better than the people who work in it. 
Bringing employees into the process of hiring their potential future colleagues has many benefits. It allows you to gain insight into what they think about the new hire and whether they meet the necessary qualifications for the job. And it makes the current employees feel like their opinions are valued and their voices are heard. They feel like they are a significant and valued piece of the company, which is great for morale. What are some other things your company can do to be more successful, just like Tesla? Well, here are eight of Elon Musk's personal tenets. Number one, it isn't about the money. Don't worry as much about your financial bottom line. Ask yourself instead, what can we learn from this project? What problems will it solve when it is completed? And what problems will we solve along the way? While it is important to be financially savvy, Make sure that you are not purely profit-driven. You will lose out on many other kinds of success if you are. Number two, pursue your passions. No project is worth completing if it makes you feel dead inside. Are you doing it because you truly care about the outcome and what you can achieve, or because the alternative is losing your job? Question your motivation. Musk started his company SpaceX because he wanted to put a person on Mars not because he wanted to make money on space travel. So be passionate about what you are doing. Apathy helps no one and bored, uninspired employees are a drain on morale. Number three, don't be afraid to think big. Fortune favors the bold. You cannot achieve your dreams if you do not dream them in the first place. Elon Musk has forever changed the auto industry, revolutionized space exploration, and wants to put people on Mars and create super fast trains that run in vacuum tunnels. Clearly, this is a man who, quite literally, knows how to shoot for the stars. Ask yourself, what do I want to accomplish with my life, no matter how audacious the idea might seem? Number four, be ready to take risks. If there is nothing ventured, then there is nothing to be gained. Even if you do fail and lose your money, you will have gained valuable insight into what not to do in the future. Take note of what you did wrong and what you need to do to do better to be more successful next time. No one ever becomes successful without failing far more times than they score a victory. Number five, ignore the critics. If comments are not constructive, then they are worthless. There will always be naysayers, people who are doing better than you, people who tell you that you ought to quit while you are behind because there is no way you will succeed. Ignore them. No one ever got anywhere by listening to the people who told them that they shouldn't even try. While constructive criticism is important and valuable, meaningless naysaying is not. Number six, enjoy yourself. There is no point in having a job or working on products that drain the soul out of you and make you yearn for the sweet release of death. While it is impossible to have fun with what you are doing 100% of the time, it is important that your job not be mind-numbing and make you listless. Number seven, no means nothing. Do not take no for an answer. Even when it seems like there is no possible way to change the no you received into the yes that you want to hear, it is imperative that you chase after it anyways. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there even when it could lead to awkward and embarrassing situations. The answer is no until you ask, so keep asking until the answer becomes yes. You will lose countless opportunities for success if you are too afraid to ask for it and chase after it. And number eight, have a singular unblinking focus. Be focused and present when working on your projects and goals. Focus on the task at hand, and don't be distracted by meaningless, insignificant annoyances. While there are certainly other things that need to get done, there will always be tasks that need to be completed. You need to decide what you are going to prioritize and funnel your energy into those projects. Don't waste your time on unimportant side quests that will ultimately bring you no closer to getting the important things done. Instead, focus on what really matters. So ask yourself, does your company take risks? Do your employees have the time and energy to enjoy themselves after working for you? Are your projects worth being motivated about? Or do workers have to slog through apathy to get anything done? What is your yardstick of success? 
Do you measure it by how much money you made from it? Or from what problems you solved and what you learned from doing it? Are your employees passionate about what they are working on? Does your company even do things that are worth being passionate about? What motivates your employees? Is it only fear of failure and being fired? Because if so, that is not a healthy workplace and you will have your work cut out for you from the beginning to be successful. Hi, my name is Joshua Richardson. Uh, today I'll be talking about Elon Musk and where he plans to take his companies into the future. Uh, one way Elon Musk has affected the stock market is through investing over $1 billion worth in Bitcoin. This is not the only cryptocurrency that Elon Musk has invested in as Dogecoin, which was something that he tweeted as a joke, but now hundreds of thousands of people have invested in this. One thing he stands to gain from this is that if people keep buying these stocks, his own value, which he has a billions of stocks that he has invested, will go up. One of the ways he has been able to keep control of his company, Tesla, is to not have a president in, in the company. Doing this prevents someone else from taking over his company. Musk doesn't have to worry about trying to make certain shareholders happy, and in turn, this gives him the ability to take more risks. Elon Musk mainly uses Twitter as his main way to tell the public information. One of his strongest allies in social media are the very people who spread damaging articles or even misinformation about him. These people who release these articles about him in a bad light are only helping him garner more attention to his business. Another way that people are trying to hurt his business is by several lawsuits. Somebody called Jay, uh, Jeff Bezos who wanted a uh, Bitcoin has also seen a 20% increase in value from 38,556 on Friday after he had changed his personal Twitter bio to hashtag Bitcoin. His tweets have caused other assets to shift like GameStop stock and Etsy, which the latter of the two increased value by 9% according to an article by CNBC. Elon Musk's ability to affect the stock market is so influential that he can also make the stock market lower. On May 4, 2020, Elon Musk said that his stock was too high. Causing his stock to drop by 10%, the stock was soon back up again, but it demonstrated his control on the stock market. One of his strongest allies in social media are the very people who spread damaging articles or even misinformation. These people who release these articles about him in a bad light, unfortunately, are inevitably helping him to increase attention. One way people have tried to hurt Elon Musk is through lawsuits and spread of misinformation. One of these people is Jeff Bezos. NASA had ran an evaluation between the two competitors, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, in which Elon Musk had won proving his to be a third of the price that uh, Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin had not been able to achieve. Be Elon Musk had told NASA that he would be able to, within about five years, send this into space. He had won. Unfortunately, Jeff Bezos told him that this was not possible and ran a lawsuit against NASA in which NASA, Elon Musk, and the government said that they would agree to postpone the project for three and a half months. Hi, my name is Kate Cass and I'm going to wrap up our entire presentation on Elon Musk and his success as a business model. Musk taking over Tesla as CEO shows his competency as a businessman because he was not afraid to have high aspirations for himself and follow his dreams. And because he wasn't afraid to follow his dreams, his, ra his ideas which may have seemed radical at the time to all the people who weren't in the futuristic mindset that he was able to possess, he was able to win over pretty much everyone to his ideas and now they don't seem as crazy anymore even though he's ahead of his time, ahead of his generation. He has an idea and he's not afraid to run with it and just as it's seen with his vehicles Model S, Model X, Model 3, Model Y, he and the short period of time in which they were created, in which they were sent out to the public, it shows also that he has an 
an indescribable amount of drive, an amount of hard work that he likes to put into his vehicles, and he's not afraid to just do it on even a small time crunch. Next thing that sets apart Elon Musk from every other business and their model is his deviation from the norm and how Musk's companies operate and that makes it different from all the others. Well, three things are his management style and how he's people focused. He's people focused. His hiring practices, how he comes to hire those and a very unusual method. For instance, he looks more not for, oh, like, is this person even like, you know, good, will he make my company look good? It's more, is this person motivated to do what they need to do? He doesn't even require them to have a diploma in college. He just wants them to be able to do their work, do it well. He wants them to have ideas. He wants them to pursue their passions. He wants them to be them as long as they do their best and they are doing what they can do to make the company and the world and themselves better people. For him, it's not about the money, it's more about learning and the experience and how this information can benefit people in the future even after he himself is gone. Um, he wants people to pursue their passions, his employees, himself, and even be able to inspire people around him, people who aren't even part of his company, to be able to pursue their passions and their dreams, which in the end can draw more people to his cause. Um, Musk hires those who aren't just looking for a way to get paid. He wants his employees to do what they want to do. Not to mention that Elon Musk has a huge plan with his company SpaceX. He, like we have already said, he wants to colonize Mars, he wants to colonize other planets, he wants us to take be, us beyond the boundaries of what we have known as human beings for ever since we had history, ever since we basically existed or had rational thought. He wants us to take he wants to take this world of ours beyond the world and go out into an, a vast and infinite universe and be able for us to not only colonize it but for us to be able to learn the deep and immersive secrets that the universe has and holds. He wants to be able to give us all the information and just all this wisdom and knowledge and experience not only of our world but as we've been stating of the universe itself this apply to you and your company? Well, deviation from the norm can draw the attention of everyone around you and if it is good intentions and if you keep high integrity, then you will draw everyone to your cause and they will stay with you. If you manage your company well, if you are more people focused and if you hire people outside of the normal way of doing it because you see them for more than just a professional looking person, then you will be able to have better employees and a better workplace. For instance, Elon Musk would bring in, as we have already stated, regular working employees from Tesla just so that they could evaluate and see if the people that they were going to hire are people that they can work with and people that they need. Another thing to keep in mind are your company's, is your company's mindset. Are you more money focused? Are you doing things simply to get a profit? Is every customer a transaction? Is every employee just someone getting paid? Do your employees like working for you? Or are they just there to get paid, get a check, and leave the office once they're done to go back to their lives and just feel drained and dread every day that they need to go into your company? Or are they just happy to be there? Are they pursuing the passions of themselves and passions that are set by the company that they help to bring about and they help to give to the world as well? Do you allow you and your company and your company's employees to have big ideas, to think big, and to pursue those ideas with boldness? If so, that is good, but if not, don't be afraid to put a, put, to put a foot forward. Fear kill, kills more dreams than failure ever will. Ignore what people think about you. Ignore what people think about your company. N ignore the naysayers, for instance, those who just don't like you because you're more successful th than them and they're jealous. Be confident in your work. Don't let them discourage you. Would Elon Musk let people discourage him? No. Look at his Twitter, for instance. He does whatever he wants and he doesn't care what people think of him. 
What he does is he enjoys himself in what he does and how he goes about it. He enjoys his work. He enjoys his passions. He enjoys himself. And so now what I have to say to you and your company is do you and your company and your employees enjoy their work? Do you enjoy your passions? Do you enjoy yourselves? If not, then do so and start right now.